I mean, we couldn't call a car because Sharif had been kicked off Uber and she was the only one with an international plan. So we just had to like wait for taxis, but we were in such an odd part of town that there were basically none. And the ones that did go by were trying to pick us up because of how drunk we probably look. Um, but then there's like, okay. It was less a taxi and more a van, like an unmarked van. Relax. So it pulls over and we were like, but the guy had really kind eyes and like seemed really entertained by our whole situation and was like, top in. So we're like, there's four of us in the back, Cherie up front, and um, we like rolled all the windows down. It was like one of those nights where like you need a jacket, but the air has that feeling of um, like under the cold is warmth and you can feel that spring is finally about to like unleash itself. Um, and I'd bought a pack of American spirits because do as the Romans do, whatever. And um, I asked the driver if he minded me smoking and he said, only if you don't mind me joining. So <laughs> I like, I stuck my head out the window and lit two up and passed one to him from my window into his because I'm a G. Um, and like, the rain had stopped, so the streets were all like reflective and sticky and there was like nobody out, nobody. And it was this endless like, landscape of warehouses and truck lots. Um, oh, and the driver was blasting Shade, like from a physical CD, the whole album straight through. And it was like, it was that exactly like in between light outside where if you got airdropped into the moment with zero context, you wouldn't have been able to tell if it was early morning or early evening. Like, same thing with the weather, right? Like you wouldn't have been able to tell if it was beginning of spring or beginning of um and after like six months without anything the sig felt so good um Cherie's up in the passenger seat like talking with a guy about I don't know I think they've already gotten into like international politics by that point and Louisa and Sammy and Ty were falling asleep on each other and I got this um very specific feeling. Um, it's like the feeling I would get when my grandparents would drive us across the country for the family reunion and they'd be in the front um, like talking and smoking and listening to the radio and I'd I'd be in the back um with my headphones like not listening to anything um but not bored um but I also wouldn't be um engaged you know I was just like existing in motion. Well, I, I was still, but everything around me was moving. It, it felt like, um, like being at home and like being nowhere at the same time. And then like, I felt incredibly sad. And then I noticed my hair was on fire. Well, not like, not like on fire fire, but um, like lightly smoking. I'd like, um, the wind 
had blown it into the sig and I guess it, yeah, managed to catch flame and the smell was terrible. So like we, we get back to the hostel and I just cut off the bomb. Well, okay. Uh, I cut off like six inches. Well, no, I cut, I cut off an inch, but then I didn't want to stop. I think it looks good. The 24 Hour Plays is an artistic home for me. The team has really believed in me ever since I was a director in the life-changing Nationals program. And every time they ask me to come back since then, I'm just more and more grateful to be a part of this family. I got to meet so many amazing humans in the middle of the pandemic and those connections uh, extend to collaborations I have today. And I am so grateful for that experience. I mean, who can resist the unforgettable panicked excitement of creating an evening of theater in less than 24 hours with a group of other theater weirdos. Any support you can give is so deeply felt. The 24 Hour Plays has provided such an amazing community for me and I would not be the artist I am today without it.